prebiotic foods. You may have heard of probiotics and probiotic foods, but prebiotics are somewhat different, although they still benefit our gut. Essentially, prebiotic foods are foods that our digestive system can't completely break down. They're quite fibre rich. And essentially what happens is that food makes its way through our digestive system into our small intestine. And it's here that our gut bacteria can actually feed off the fibre. And I quite like the analogy of our digestive systems being this garden, this flora of bacteria, which you may have heard about if you haven't already watched my film on probiotics. So this gut bacteria, this gut garden that exists within our digestive system needs fertilizer. It needs foods to help it thrive and grow. And that's where your prebiotic foods come in. They are the fertilizer for our living bacteria that resides within our digestive system. So now I'm going to talk to you about my favourite prebiotic foods that are super easy to incorporate in your diet and routine. First of all, bananas. Bananas are partially insoluble fibre to feed our gut bacteria, but what you want to be making sure is that you're having unripe bananas, so slightly green, not too yellow, sweet and soft, because that's when the fibre from the banana will actually make it to our gut bacteria. Leeks and onions. Leeks and onions actually are from the same family. And you might have noticed sometimes if you eat them raw that you might get a little bit of a stomach upset, a little bit bloated, and that's because they really, really are high in fibre. But what's great for our guts is that hopefully when you eat them, this fibre will make it to your gut bacteria, which will feed them. And they're really easy to incorporate. You can have them chopped raw in salads, you can have them sprinkled at the end of your meal, but it is best to have them raw because that way they'll give your guts the best beneficial fibre that it can. Next up is French Jerusalem artichokes. Now, not many people actually incorporate these into their diet because they're not the easiest vegetable to consume, but they are really, really fibrous and good for our gut bacteria. So I suggest trying to add these into stir fries, perhaps into sauces, or actually I quite like to just pan fry them with a little bit of garlic and olive oil, and you can make the, crisp, the skins really super crispy, so they're almost like a baked, semi-soft sweet potato. Garlic is one of my favourite ingredients to add into sauces and stews and curries, and not only is it fantastic for our guts, but it's also great for your cardiovascular health and for your immune system. The best way to get the best sort of nutrients and the best fibre for our gut is to unfortunately have garlic raw. Now I know you're thinking that might give you smelly breath, but honestly it's worth having just a little bit in your food every so often for your gut health. Otherwise you can cook it but lightly cook it, don't fry it to oblivion. So I like to chop up my garlic and add it into the last stages of food so that I can still get the beneficial nutrients from the garlic without overcooking it. And if you are having it raw, then I do suggest chewing on some parsley leaves or some lemon rind because that can actually help get rid of that remaining garlic flavour in your mouth. Oats are another fantastic source of fibre. However, you want to make sure that you're getting the whole jumbo oats, not the milled sort of porridge oats that a lot of us do consume. Just because to get the full fibre, they need to be in their whole nature rather than being milled and ground down. Now, fibre also has beta-glucans in, which have been shown to boost the immune system and also really good for lowering cholesterol levels. So I like to use oats not just in porridge, but also toasted in salads. I like to make breads with oats, and I also like to make overnight oats.